What's going on everybody? We are uh, gonna do a little video here. We've got a, uh, about five weeks now on the new truck and kind of want to do a little update. I uh, had a couple of questions about how the truck was doing and uh, maybe provide a little more information on exactly how the truck is specced. And, uh, and yeah, just give a little update. We're five weeks into running uh, with the truck and uh, kind of do that. And then uh, my thoughts and impressions after five weeks of owning uh, a Kenworth, driving a Kenworth for the first time. And, uh, you know, modern truck compared to my 2012 Peterbilt, but uh, I'll go into some details on how, even though it's a 2012, that's a little bit of an older style truck. All right, so here we go. So, hey, we're inside now, and uh, so just to uh, recap for anybody who doesn't know, uh, I did buy a 2019 T680. Uh, I had the 2012 Peterbilt 386, and uh, we're five weeks in now, and I uh, wanted to kind of give a little update, a uh, kind of a five-week uh, impression on the T680 in general, and uh, and kind of my experiences with it so far. Uh, everything so far has been very good. Uh, we did have one little issue uh, with the four ways. The uh, four way flashers messed up on it. They stuck on, for lack of a better term. Uh, it was a computer related issue. Uh, computer reprogram on the switch and took care of it wasn't that big a deal. I was in the shop maybe about two hours, two and a half hours, something like that. It wasn't crazy. P, uh, the Kenworth up in uh, Grand Rapids got me right in, looked at it, and uh, got it figured out. So that worked out pretty good. I've had no other issues with the truck. It's been running really good. Uh, let's go over a few of the specs that uh, how the truck is specced. Now, now this was a lot truck. This was not a truck that I ordered. Uh, and MHC Kenworth as a whole, nationwide, they have a couple of different specs that they order on trucks to put on the lot. And they're a basic generic spec uh, through their years of selling trucks to companies and to owner operators. They kind of they see patterns and they see things that are important to owner operators. They see things that are important to companies and small fleets, and so they have a couple of different specs. Uh, and there's a spec that uh, is a little bit uh, less expensive. It has less things in it. It doesn't have the swivel seat. It doesn't have this swivel table that I've got the the phone sitting on right now. Uh, it it has a few little differences in things like that. It's a couple thousand dollars difference in price. Uh, but you can get those trucks there on the lot, and then they're ready to go. Same thing with this truck here. This is a certain spec. It's a little bit nicer. It's got the built-in uh, navigation in the dash with the extra gauges. It's got the swivel chair, the swivel table, the, the drawer refrigerator. That's another spec that they have. Now, they, they also, you know, they have this exact spec in either the Cummins or the Packard motor. <laughs> The Packard engine is with the shorter hood. The shorter hood will not accommodate the 15-liter Cummins engine. It's, the engine itself is a little bigger, and so it won't fit under the short hood. So if you go with the Cummins engine, you will get the longer hood, the traditional length hood on a T680. For weight savings and cost savings and uh, everything else on the Packard engine trucks, they're predominantly going to be the short hood, and I'm okay with that. Uh, the T680 to me does a very good job. The engineers who designed the truck, they did a good job of making the short hood not stand out crazy that, uh, it looks good to me still. So this is a Packard engine truck and it's got the, uh, the Ian Fuller Packard 12 speed automatic, uh, with 279 rear end axle and uh, the 12 speed is an overdrive so it uh, it's really spec for fuel mileage 
but it's not spec for fuel mileage at a company standpoint. It's spec for fuel mileage at a owner operator level. Uh, this truck, even running 65 miles an hour, is only turning 11 something RPM. It doesn't get up to <clears throat> uh, at 70. It's still below 1300 RPM. So these trucks are spec for owner operators, knowing that they're not going to be most likely running around at 62 miles an hour to still be able to get good fuel mileage. Uh, so that's a good, that's a good thing. And <clears throat> typically I, I've been trying to stay around the 64, 65 mile per hour range. And that keeps me around 1200 RPM, which is a really good, uh, RPM for the engine. So, uh, the spec is really good. Uh, on the owner operator side of things is, you know, having that in mind. So, uh, as far as performance of the truck with 279 rear ends, it, uh, it, it does pull better than I expected it to be in a fuel mileage setup. Uh, it's not going to win any drag races being that it's an automatic. It does have that slow to get going aspect of it. And that's just, that's just the nature of the beast it's 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 a uh it's a decision on where you want to go do you want that maximum horsepower pull off the torque off the line uh you're going to give up the fuel mileage uh so i'm i'm okay with that i expected that i went into it knowing that that was going to be the case i've driven automatics before and uh so that's not a huge surprise to me. The thing that did shock me a little bit was even with that 279 rear end and that fuel mileage setup, it still pulls hills better than I expected. I uh, was able to go up Mont Eagle with a load of water and uh, maintain 45 miles an hour. Anybody that doesn't know Mont Eagle is a decent hill on the East Coast. It's in Tennessee. And... Uh, we just today ran down through the West Virginia mountains on 77 from, uh, from Ohio down into North Carolina. And, uh, there was a couple of times where we got it down to 10th gear. Uh, or no, let me, let me take that back. There was a couple, there was one time we got it to ninth gear. Most of the time we ended up down around 10th gear and it would maintain around 40 miles an hour up some of the steepest of the hills. I was okay with that. <clears throat> uh, I've got... Uh, currently about 43,000 pounds in the trailer. So considering that load and to be able to maintain 40-ish uh, on some of the steepest hills, I was pleased with that. Uh, the truck is very light. This truck is over 1,000 pounds lighter, almost 1,500 pounds lighter than the Peterbilt was. Uh, part of that is wheelbase. It's 10-inch shorter wheelbase. Part of that is uh, the 13-liter engine versus the 15-liter Cummins that I had, even though this truck has more horsepower than the Cummins. Uh, it does have 100 foot-pounds less torque than the Cummins had, uh, but that's okay. The The biggest thing is, is the fuel mileage. Now, I will say that I don't typically fuel the truck all the way up, so it's kind of hard. It, it's very hard. It's almost impossible uh, to gauge fuel mileage because you have to fuel completely up and then, you know, drive a certain amount of miles, you know, or, or track the miles and then fill it again. I've actually only done that once <clears throat> just because I don't fuel the truck all the way up. And, uh, the one time that I did it was this past week <clears throat> going from, uh, Barkeyville, Pennsylvania. Uh, they're on I-80 filled the truck all the way up, drove down to Troy, Illinois, through Columbus, got dropped off and reloaded in Columbus, and then made it on down to Troy, Illinois, almost to St. Louis. Uh, did not fill the truck there, uh, put 75 gallons in the truck, and then made it all the way to Oklahoma City and did an unload, came back or got loaded again and came all the way back to Stratford, Missouri, there on 44. And fill the truck back all the way to the top again. On that stretch there, including the 75 gallons that I got in Troy, <clears throat> uh, with all those miles from Barkeyville down and, and everything, 
it came out at 7.25 miles per gallon, which to a lot of people will not sound like it's very high because they may be driving newer model trucks than what I was driving with the Peterbilt, and that is their normal fuel mileage. For me, that is over a mile a gallon improvement. The Peterbilt consistently averaged right around six miles a gallon. Uh, and so to improve a mile, mile and a quarter is a huge savings on the bottom line. Uh, and I honestly feel like that will improve when I had the new Schneider Finance Cascadia and got to about the 50 or 60,000 mile mark. I did notice a considerable improvement in fuel mileage as it got broke in. And I feel like, you know, even if I get a quarter of a mile a gallon with this truck, that's, that's a mile and a half uh, a gallon improvement over what I had with the Peterbilt. So that is spectacular in my world. And if it, if it just runs around seven and a half as its normal life, you know, fuel mileage, I'll be tickle pink with that. Uh, if it improves any higher than that, that's just icing on top of the cake. So, uh, really happy with the fuel mileage. Truck seems to pull really good. It, it, based on my expect, expectation level of what it was when I bought it. Uh, and again, you know, no issues with the truck other than the little four-way glitch. And uh, I'm really enjoying it. I love sitting in this chair. Uh, if you're somebody who's looking to buy a truck and, and you are looking at it from a fuel mileage standpoint and looking at a modern type truck, uh, that's the other thing. Driving a modern type truck now compared to the Peterbilt. Now, a lot of people say, well, the Peterbilt was a 2012. That's not that old of a truck. Well, no, it's not technically. But that cab on the Peterbilt 386 is the same exact cab as when the 379 came out in 1987. It's the same exact cab. They changed a few things. They changed the windows. They changed the mirrors off of the doors onto the cowl, things of that nature. But it's the same exact cab. They changed the dash. Everything else is the same, though. I mean, it's the same windshield. You can put a 1987 windshield into that 2012 386. Same as that cab. It was loud. It was small. And while I enjoyed that aspect of it in, to a certain degree, now that I'm into a modern-style truck that's quiet and comfortable, it's a smoother ride, I do notice a huge difference. And it's a nice difference. Uh, it's a more comfortable ride. Uh... The Peterbilt rode good. The Peterbilt rode better than my Cascadia Freightliner did when I had the Schneider Finance truck. The, got into the Peterbilt, and I could immediately notice a difference in how well it rode. This rides better. Uh, it's just a more refined truck compared to the Pete. Uh, now, granted, a new Peterbilt probably would ride better than my Peterbilt that I had. So I'm not knocking Peterbilt in any way. It's just the Peterbilt that I owned was more of an older style design engineering and this newer style it rides better not knocking the peterbilt at all but uh so yeah I'm, I'm very pleased with it uh it's not a big hood i love the big hoods and that that would maybe my next truck purchase if i buy another one uh it just didn't make sense right now they're a little more money they cost more to run in fuel and uh it just didn't make sense for my business setup and the amount of money I need to make and the amount of money I want to pay uh, to do that route right now. But anyway, very pleased and uh, just wanted to give you all a little update and uh, kind of explain some of the specs on the truck. So I hope everybody's having a good weekend. It's Sunday. We may do a live feed tonight. Not sure just yet. I'm currently sitting here. Uh, let's see. Currently sitting here watching the race on the tablet. And uh, had y'all sitting there. There's a Bluetooth speaker I use. So yeah. Anyway, we're gonna uh, we're gonna finish watching the race, and uh, we may do a live feed tonight. Not sure just yet. And uh, but anyhow, that's that's the that's the the update. Five weeks in, couldn't be any happier with my purchase. Uh, very pleased, and uh, so far so good. And. Uh, thankful that it worked out in the way that it did, you know, so just wanted to do that. Hope y'all have a good weekend and uh, a safe weekend and uh, we'll see you again.